Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Marshall. Welcome to Tumble, the show where we explore stories of science discovery. Look around you. You're probably surrounded by color right now. But have you ever wondered why colors exist? Well, that's a mind-blowing question for you. Colors just exist. Let's not think about it. Well, we're going to think about it. You'll be surprised to find out how colors are like the ultimate optical illusion. And it might change the way you think about the colors you see. Right after this. So if you're listening at home, feel free to grab your crayons, colored pencils, paint, or whatever colorful craft things you have. Or just look at the colorful objects around you, and we'll get started with a question from our listener, Phoebe. I'm Phoebe, I'm seven years old, and my question is, why does color exist in the world? So wait, why does color exist? Like, why is it? I I have no idea, that's just too massive to think about. (laughs) So you don't have a theory for this? Are you kidding? No way. No (laughs) idea. This is the first time I've even thought about why. (laughs) Well, maybe our listeners actually have some ideas. Why do you think color exists in the world? And how do you think scientists study color? Think about it because we'll be back with a scientist who's also an artist to look at color from every angle of its existence. To answer Phoebe's question, I talked to a neuroscientist named Bevel Conway. Bevel studies how the brain works, but he got interested in color when his artist aunt gave him his first set of watercolors. And I remember hours spent just squeezing the tubes of paint out and mixing up big puddles and just watching them like a kind of movie of the colors blending and merging one into the next. As Bevel experimented with his colors, all sorts of questions sprung into his mind, and they stuck with him. I've always been obsessed, fascinated by that process of color and how color works and what color does for us and why we have color and whether or not you see color the same way I see color. Yeah, I think we often take color for granted because it's just always there. Like, that thing, it's blue, and that's it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when you think about it, it really is kind of crazy. Like, what? what is it? It almost feels like an impossible question, but Bevel has a short answer and a long answer to it. Here's the short answer. Because it's really, really useful. Okay, that's short, but what does that even mean? Like, how is color useful? Here's where the long answer comes in. Actually, two of them. There's two ways of answering the question. One is like... You could answer the question, why does color exist in the world, by just asking, in terms of physics, why is there spectral energy in the world? (laughs) Wow, what's spectral energy? Sounds like something a superhero would definitely use. Totally. Spectral energy is basically rainbow power. And what a rainbow is, is when white light goes through a prism and is split into all the different wavelengths that comprise daylight. You can think of a wavelength as the ripples you make in a pool of water when you tap it with your finger. The quicker you tap, the faster the ripples go out and the closer they are together. When you break them up into a rainbow, the different wavelengths appear to us to have different colors. Okay, so the waves have different lengths or distances between the ripples. So that's what makes colors different from each other? Exactly. Each wavelength corresponds to a different color or shade of color. And we can't see the wavelengths themselves. They're invisible to us until they're broken up in some way. Like in a rainbow. Right. But get this. The colors we see aren't all the colors that exist in the world. And that's because our eyes just aren't big enough to see them. Every part in your eye that catches light from a given part out in the world, there's not enough space at that location to have a detector for all the thousands of colors you can see. 
what? So there are more colors out there that we like can't even imagine because of our eyes? There are probably an infinite number more colors out there in the world. Okay, so you're saying most important thing here, our coloring boxes could be larger if only our eyes were. <laughs> yes. And different organisms see color in different ways, which brings us to Bevel's second answer to Phoebe's question. My guess is that your question isn't about the physics and chemistry, but more about why has evolution made organisms so that they are sensitive to this spectral energy, to color information? Why do we have color information? In other words, why can we see color? Okay, so it sounds like we're already going down much more of a rabbit hole. 100%. Especially when you consider that it's not just things with eyes that can see color. It turns out that color information, seeing color, is something almost every organism on the planet can do, even mushrooms and bacteria and plants. They're able to see colors. Whoa, okay, so mushrooms can see colors. How does that work? Plants, fungi, and other eyeless organisms don't see like we do, but they can sense color because it's important to their own survival. Because plants' leaves are green, the green light absorbs certain energy from the colors from the wavelengths in the light. The green leaves are getting green wavelengths of light, but there are many different shades of light in those wavelengths, and plants have these built-in sensors to detect that kind of light. And so a plant that's got these color vision detectors in it can actually tell whether or not it's growing underneath another plant or not, just by the difference in color that it receives. Okay, so like whether it's shady or whether they have lots of light to grow towards, which plants definitely need to know to survive. Exactly. Proving Bevel's point that color is useful for all organisms on Earth. So that's definitely a different way to think about why color exists for everyone, but what about us? Like... I don't really think about color just in terms of survival, unless it's like what color a taco is. <laughs> totally. Our brains take color to the next level because unlike plants, we can actually think about it. And that's what Bevel is most interested in, how we think. So color is like a very simple way of teasing apart, of pulling apart that process of thinking. So wait, what, what does color have to do with the process of thinking? Well, a thought about what color something is, is one of the simplest thoughts you can have. So if I ask you, what's the color of a banana, and you're not even looking at one now, you can tell me that it's yellow. You've just had a thought. When you describe the color of something, you're creating a picture in your mind. You build that picture out of things you've seen in the past, and your past experiences are a big part of what make up your thoughts. I get it. Like, if you ask me what color a banana is, and I'd literally never seen a banana before, I really wouldn't know what to tell you. I'd have no banana thoughts. Exactly. So that's why Bevel thinks of color as not just existing as a physical thing. Color is also based on our experience. Color depends on your past experiences and the, the other sort of factors surrounding what's happening when you look at something. Okay, so that's really wild. He's saying how we see color depends on what's happening as we look at it? Yes, and that's why sometimes different people see colors differently. This is the optical illusion part. You can make one physical thing look different colors depending on the context. The same object can look different colors? What does he even mean by that? Well, remember when I had a jacket that I thought was purple and you thought was blue? I mean, thought it was blue. <laughs> well, I definitely thought it was a purple jacket when I bought it. And I didn't realize that you saw it as blue until I'd asked one time if you'd seen my purple jacket and you were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you mean your blue jacket? And no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Eventually, after looking at it enough, I saw how you could have thought of it as blue. But the point is, we describe the same jacket as different colors. What makes something look colored is not just what's happening in the eye, 
but it's what's happening in the eye and how your brains are unconsciously interpreting what that is. So when he says that our brains unconsciously interpret what we're seeing, he means that we don't realize why we see things the way we see them. Yeah, but the fact that I saw my jacket as a different color than you points to the idea that I had a different experience of that color leading up to seeing the jacket. So your experience is sort of colored by your memories. And we know that that's true for every thought, every kind of thought you have. Oh man, if we can't agree on colors, what even is reality? I know, and that's why Bevel did a study to understand how we identify and describe colors. He and his colleagues showed people a big slate of color chips that looked like a wall of paint chips that you'll see at a paint store. Here's how the experiment worked. If I pick one of those colors, but I don't show you which one I've picked, and I just say, I've picked the red one, you'll go to the same wall of color chips and you'll pick exactly the same chip that I said when I said red. But if I said, I've picked the green one, you're all over the map. You could pick a chip that I might think is quite blue. So that's kind of like our experience with the jacket. Yeah, and like I said, blue and purple are pretty close. (laughs) So there's this interesting kind of parallel in how we name colors. And that turns out to be true for all languages, all people around the world. All people around the world are worse at talking about greens and blues than they are talking about reds and oranges and yellows. Yeah, I mean, I guess I've never mistaken your yellow raincoat for orange. Yeah, and you wouldn't because it helps that yellow is like a classic color for a raincoat. Definitely. But what does Bevel mean by saying that people are worse at talking about greens and blues in purples? We think that that's probably because the stuff that we want to talk about in the world are reds and oranges and yellows. Really? We want to talk about faces. We want to talk about apples. We want to talk about squirrels. Yeah, I mean, I always want to talk about squirrels. You do. (laughs) Bevel found this theory to be true across many different languages that he tested. And he thinks we're better at describing warm colors because they're more useful colors. And so when you want to make signs to be really attention-grabbing, you use red. Yeah, so like stop signs, fire trucks, um, warning signs that you're going the wrong way on the highway, all red. Yeah, but the things you don't want to be too distracting, like exit signs on the highway or recycling bins, are greens and blues. So does that mean that warm colors are inherently more attention-grabbing for us? Or are we born to see red more clearly than blue? I think really what's going on is that our evolution has endowed us, has given us this system that's incredibly adaptive. In other words, how we think about color has evolved around our experience of color in our environment. When you grow up in a world that's filled with warm colored things that happen to be the sorts of things that you care about, then that visual system develops ways of talking about warm colors better than it does talking about cool colors. And that could all change given different things to look at. But I could imagine that You know, we might artificially create a world where all the important stuff is in cool colors, and then we might find a very different kind of visual system. Wait, so we could literally change how we see if we change the colors of the things that are important to us? Yeah, and we actually can do that, because think about paint. No other animals go about in their world painting stuff to turn it from one color into another color. That's just something we do. That's something that humans do. Relatively speaking, it wasn't too long ago that we created chemical or industrial ways of making our own colors. I promise you, probably pretty much everywhere you look around you, there is something that some human has colored. And that means that we have changed what we call our visual diet. We've changed what we actually look at as a result of our own industrial activities, which means that we're sort of changing the demands. We're changing what we want our visual systems to do. Oh, so we're kind of evolving with our colors. Will we be able to recognize millennial pink just as easily as we recognize fire truck red? Possibly, because that's what happened with blue. There are actually very few things in nature that are truly blue, 
even blueberries. They're kind of purple. So in very old languages, pre-industrial languages, turns out they don't even have a word for blue. They don't bother because there's just no blue objects in the world. And we're starting to see with our own world the invention of these new kinds of colors. And now all of a sudden we need new kinds of words for these colors because they can be used now to do interesting, important, useful things. Oh, so if we're changing the colors that exist in the world, we're having new color experiences, new color thoughts, and maybe even changing how we see color. That's, that's like huge. Well, do you see colors differently now than when we started the episode? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at like this bowl now and I'm thinking about the invisible wavelengths and how my brain is interpreting them through my eyes and how I'm thinking this bowl is like totally brown. But you and me might not see it as brown because you think it's purple. <laughs> uh, not so sure about that bowl, but let's just say we have a lot of new color information to take in. And now when I look at color, I think about, like, sort of all the portals it could open up to light, to life, to our brains, and to our futures. It's definitely all of existence. How do you see colors differently than you did at the start of the show? Maybe try Bevel's paint chip experiment. With friends or family, try pointing out different colors and describing them to each other. Are you using the same words to describe them? Are some colors harder to describe than others? Let us know what you find out. And if you've drawn a picture or done some art during this episode, take a picture of it and send it to us at tumblepodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to see it. Thanks today to Dr. Bevel Conway, an investigator at the National Eye Institute, and special thanks to Phoebe for her excellent question. Want to learn why we choose our favorite colors, or if the red I see is the same as the red you see? Listen to our bonus interview episode with Bevel, available on our Patreon ad-free feed. Just pledge $1 a month or more to support the show at patreon.com slash tumblepodcast. We'll have more information about the science of color on the blog on our website at sciencepodcastforkids.com. Sarah Robertson Lentz is our editor and made the episode art. Eric Kuhn is our engineer and mixer. I'm Lindsay Patterson, and I wrote this episode. And I'm Marshall Escamilla, and I made all the music and sound design for this episode. Tumble is a production of Tumble Media. Thanks for listening, and join us next time for more stories of science discovery. Science discovery.